Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to Viking Out Leisure. I'm Charles. I'm going to take you on a quick uh, tutorial video on how we use our Bailey Orion here. Uh, this is the 430-4. Uh, we'll just go around and make sure that we know what everything does and how everything works on the van. We'll start, this is obviously our door into the caravan. You can see it is pinned back against the side of the caravan at the moment. All right, to release that, this just locks into place to stop it um, getting caught by the wind. All right, so we release that with this lever here and then we can shut the door, all right. It is what we would call a stable door, okay? So we can split this in half, all right, and just close half of the door, which is very nice if you want to lock our kids or dogs or whatever we want to do inside the van. To lock from the inside, we push that up to the red dot, okay? That will lock the door, stop people being able to come in from the outside. We have another handle here as well, which we can pull down and turn this round. All right, that will lock into place as an extra handle for getting in or out. And we can also use it as an extra door lock as well, as a bit of extra security for the door when we're not using our caravan, all right? The keys for that are also on your key ring, all right? Um, so you have uh, two full sets of keys which are attached here. Okay, um, so we have this small key here, which is for your door lock there. The flat one here is for your main door entrance and your lockers, and the other one is for your hitch lock, okay? When we get to our site, we do need to be leveling our caravan and making sure the caravan is level. That is front to back and left to right. To level left to right, you may well need some leveling wedges to raise one side of the caravan higher than the other. Most pictures these days you'll find will be, will be level left to right, but um, not always the case, so just bear that in mind. To level the van front to back, we use our jockey wheel here. We can wind the caravan up and we can wind the caravan down using this handle here and that way we can get a level from front to back across the caravan. What we want to do is use some kind of spirit level inside the van or on the A-frame and once we've got that nice and level we're then in position to wind down our corner steadies which are just here. We have one of those on each corner and you can see we have a bolt here and we can wind those down. There is a handle in that back locker there to do that by hand. We do that once the caravan's level, we do not try and level our caravan with those because you can damage the bottom of our caravan and also um, uh, bend the legs potentially. So level it first and then put the steadies down because they are there just to steady the caravan. Coming around, your hitch is here. We'll do a full hitch up with you when you pick the van up. So we won't go into too much detail about that. A couple of things you do need to know. 13 pin electrics on this van here okay so that will provide the power to go to your rear lights also to the 12 volt system for running your battery charger and your fridge while you're traveling um, we also have an alco hitch head stabilizer here so we do need to make sure we have an alco compatible tow ball um, please do ask if you need to know whether you have one or not it's slightly different spacing to a normal tow ball if you have a tow ball currently and it's got grease on it, all that grease must be removed before we put our hitch head stabiliser onto that. We have friction pads in here which stop the caravan snaking. Uh, if they get greasy then they will do no good whatsoever at all. So it means to make sure that's all cleaned off. You also, if you have a brand new tow ball and it has the black paint on the top of the tow ball, we need to be sanding that off till we're back to bare metal. Again for a similar reason, those friction pads don't like a smooth surface, it will make it kind of null and void. So no grease, no paint bare metal and then we're ready to go okay just here we have a boiler on board okay which is providing our hot water and our um and our heating okay so it's a truma boiler here this is our boiler cover which goes over the top of it like so when the boiler is in use especially on gas we must remove this okay that then allows all the exhaust to come out and not back into our caravan not forgetting of course to put it back on when we have finished using it as well we need to get fresh water into our van, so you'll need one of these, which is an aqua roll, okay? That will where how we can get our fresh water um, from, the, um, the, from the site's tap back to our caravan. Put it in, and you have your submersible pump here that you will find in your back locker. Um, that plugs into the side of the van here, okay? Locks into place by using this flap, okay? That locks it in. Drop this into the barrel, then we're in a position to turn on our, um, our water pump inside the van, okay? So once that's submerged all the way in, make sure it's at the bottom of the barrel. Um, that way we are maximizing the amount of water that we've got in our barrel there, okay? So you'll need a waste master um, and an aqua roll. That's for the fresh water. The water pump, again, you will find in the back locker with all your other bits and pieces as well. 
Now we said about a waste master, that is gonna lie down here underneath these two flaps, and that is gonna collect old gray water coming out of our taps, showers and etc. things like that, all right? We have two, one coming from our bathroom, one coming from our kitchen, okay? Um, there is some gray pipe again in that side locker, um, which will fit perfectly into these two holes. We then cut that to size, um, one coming out of each, put that into our waste master and that collects all of our grey water. And then once that's full, you take that to your service point on site and um, and there we go. We can uh, and then bring it back nice and empty and do the whole thing again. Again, we've got the heater flue here, okay? So, so just bear that in mind, all right? We don't want to be blocking that or obstructing that. So you've got two flues, one for your boiler and one for your heating here as well, okay? Moving on to the back of the van, we have two cupboards here. All right, this is all about our toilet. So we have two doors. One is our flush tank, which is this one here. We have a separate tank for our flush. The reason for that is we add a chemical to it. Okay, we use a pink chemical with a, and we mix it in with our flush water and we put that in until this is full. That way, when we flush the toilet, that chemical will only A, help them smell nice, but it will also B, keep everything nice and lubricated within the pump system for your toilet. Okay. The pink chemical you can buy in the shop, okay, but you will need some of that to make your toilet work properly. All right. Right. Okay, once you flush the toilet, it's obviously got to go somewhere, and that then comes down into our uh, toilet cassette down here. So if we open that up, there we go. We've got our toilet cassette sitting here. Um, when this is full, there's an indicator light on the toilet, which will tell you when it's full. We remove it by lifting up the orange handle, pull the whole unit out. Okay, and there we go. You can see it's on wheels. Okay, and we also have an extendable handle for wheeling it to our service point. Okay, there'll be a dedicated point for this on site. Um, so you'll soon find out where that is. All right, it's basically just a big toilet. So once we get to the, uh, to the, to the service point, we're gonna extend our handle here, all right, to a 90 degree position like that. And then we're gonna take the cap off the end. Once you've done that, we have an orange button here. We need to press that down. What that does is release the air pressure inside the unit. It makes it much easier for us to empty the contents out down the service point. So once we've done all that, everything will empty out quite nicely. I would then suggest putting some more water inside. There's normally a hose pipe there, rinsing it out, giving it a good shake around, make sure we're getting all the contents out, empty that one more time. And then we wanna reprime this unit. We use another chemical in here. We use a blue chemical typically, all right? We mix that with water. Again, you can buy that chemical in the shop. What that does is break everything down inside the unit. Okay, A, keeps things smelling nice. B, breaks it all down and makes it nice and easy when we are emptying the unit, okay? So it's not as um, as, as unpleasant as people make out or think, all right? It's, once you've done it a couple of times, it's no problem at all. Once we've reprimed that unit, reading the instructions on the blue bottle as to how much we put in, we then have to load this back into our housing here, okay? That drops in, put the handle in, okay? And that locks into place there and stops it moving around. When you're not using your van, you do want to make sure you're not leaving anything A, in your flush tank, B, in your cassette, all right? It's good practice. We don't want to leave any water or anything that could potentially freeze and damage anything inside the van. So we need to empty that and also drain our flush tank. We do that by just up here. You can see we have a, a little pose we can pull down, pull the stopper out the end, and that will um, drain down our flush tank. You see we've got some rubber seals going around all these, all these um, cup, uh, lockers here it's always worth having some silicon spray and periodically we want to be spraying around those okay just to uh, keep them more soft and supple and stop them from cracking and perishing on the back of the van we've got our other two corner steadies at the back there also where our number plate is going to go so of course you will need a number plate to depict the car that you're towing with of course coming on round here is the locker we keep talking about with all of our bits and pieces in it so as you can see we have a corner steady winder here we have our grey waste hose here, okay. We have a, um, a hitch cover, all right. And we also have the tool for engaging our motor mover on and off as well. So we'll have a look at that in a bit as well. From a power point of view, uh, two, two types of power in a van. You have 240 volt, which is provided by a mains cable here. So you will need one of those. Okay, that plugs into the van here and provides us with 240 volt power to our domestic plug sockets, boiler, fridge, and things like that. Um, however, we also need to bridge that with a 12 volt system so that we can use our van off grid. Um, so what this does is provide the power to our lights, water pump, fridge panel, um, and 
and other bits and pieces like that. And then the gas can um, can compensate for your the rest of your 240 volt power if you were off grid. Okay, so if you're in a field in the middle of nowhere, you can use just your 12 volt system and the gas and everything will be fine. If you're on a site where you have 240 volt power, you plug in and that will A, charge your battery and B, um, provide you with domestic power inside the van. So you will need a mains cable, okay, you will need a battery, uh, so just bear that in mind as well. Gas, right. See, so this is set up for propane in here. As you can see, we've got that red bottle sitting at the back there. Okay, um, so when you're traveling, you must make sure, A, your um, your, bat your bottle is strapped in or, or secured, and also that it is switched off. Now we can do that by turning down the handle on the, the knob on the top, okay, and that will turn the gas off. Once we get to site, we open it all the way up, that will allow the gas flow to come through our pigtail into our bulkhead regulator here, which will then convert the gas pressure to the working pressure of the van. Um, this here, this propane hose goes in on an opposite thread into our bottle, all right, so it's not lefty loosey, it's uh, it's the other way around, okay, um, and we will need a gas spanner to to remove that for as well but you want to make sure that's nipped up nice and tight that way when we come to use our gas we won't be leaking it into our gas locker okay coming into the van once we have plugged everything in, we've levered our van outside we've plugged in our water we've got our waste master ready to receive water as well we want to start plumbing the van up with water replacing the air that's in everything at the moment with water okay so firstly what we want to do is come and close all of our taps so when you leave your van you'll always leave your taps open and we'll talk about that and to why we do that a little bit later on but come in close all your taps in your shower in your bathroom okay that way when we turn the pump on we won't start uh, spraying water all over the van okay then what we're going to do is come and find our boiler okay which i know is underneath the seat here all right there she sits there okay it's a 10 litre truma boiler and what we want to do is uh, close the boiler drain valve now if you can see just down there there's a yellow switch okay uh, if i lift this up and get a better view just here that switch there is in the downwards position at the moment so when you first get to your van it will be up like that but what you want to do is come in switch that down that way when we turn our pump on we won't just pump water straight down to the ground this is what we use to drain the system down when we finish using the van right once we've done that i'm just going to open this door it's a bit warm in here i'm going to open a skylight these skylights open very easily push the button pull down and pull back right I'm going to come to my main control panel here, okay? Uh, this tells us the voltage of my battery, okay? That's charging at the moment. You can see it's at 13 volts. All right, but that will tell me what my battery condition of my battery is like. Come on, turn on my master switch here. Turn on my lights. You can see I can turn all my lights on and off from one switch here. There are individual switches as well, but we can do it all from one switch. And I'm going to come and find my water pump and turn that on there, okay? My awning light is also there as well. You can see that just over the top, okay? So I'm going to turn on my water pump, okay, that way I can then start um, purging my water system. Now, if you can imagine at the moment, my it's not because I've already done this span, of course, because I've been testing it, but if we just pretend it isn't, that boiler will just be full of air when you first get to it. So you're going to come, you're going to turn your tap over to the hot side, and we're going to turn the tap on, all right? Now, I've got a nice steady flow of water here because I've purged it, but what you'll get is a lot of coughing and sputtering, okay, um, while it drags the uh, the water from the barrel outside, pushes all the air out of the boiler through all the pipes. And once it stops coughing and sputtering and you've got a nice steady flow like that, you can shut the tap off and then you've purged that hot leg to this tap. Do the same in the kitchen, do it in the bathroom, do it in the shower. Then we want to purge our cold leg, so we turn the cold turn it over to the cold side, turn the tap on again and wait for a steady flow of water. This will be much quicker than the hot because we haven't got a boiler to fill up, all right? But once we get all rid of all the coughing and sputtering, that way we've got all the air out of the whole system and we are ready to go. But always do it with all your taps. Even if you're not going to use your shower, still purge the water through to it. That way we've got no air in the system at all and it just makes the whole system run better, all right? Um, okay. Now we've filled that boiler up, we want to heat that water up in the boiler, of course, and potentially we want to turn our heating on as well. Um, so our water is done from here. So we've got a 240 volt water heater, which is just there, okay. Um, 
that is literally on or off. Okay, if we turn it, if we plugged into mains, that's how we're going to heat our water up because we weren't going to use our gas if we are plugged into mains. Okay, so we we'll just turn that on. That will then turn the element on and start heating that water up in the boiler. However, if we were off grid, we weren't or didn't have access to mains power, we may well turn that off. And then up here we have our ultra store settings, which is for the gas side of things. I've got off in the middle, which it is at the moment, or I can flick it to 50 or 70. So I could heat the water up to 70, 50 degrees by flicking it up. All the way down, I'm going to flick it and heat the water up to 70 degrees, purely on the gas side of things, okay? You can do if you want to, if it was really cold and you wanted to heat that water up really quickly, you could turn the 230 volt water heater on as well and have it running in conjunction with each other if you wish to. However, I know I'm on mains here. I don't need to use my gas for that. It will get nice and hot on the 240 volt power. I can, in fact, this has been on overnight. So already that there is untouchable because it is that hot. So do be careful. It does produce very hot water. But of course, it is a mixer tap, so we can add cold to it to get it to the desired temperature. So electric side and gas side, really quite simple. Underneath that, you do see we've got a light here for our kitchen. From the heating, Here's our whale space heater over here. All right, again, switch for on and off for the 240 volt side of things is just here. So I've turned that on there. Now I've got different settings here, as you can see. The top one is just purely my temperature. Yep. Yeah. And the bottom one is my power source. Okay, so I can have it off, which is on the zero there. Okay, if I wanna run, if I'm plugged into mains, I can run it on half a kilowatt of power, one kilowatt of power, or two kilowatts of power, depending on what's available to me on the site that I'm staying at. Nine times out of 10, you'll figure it out because you'll start tripping. If you're trying to run two kilowatts of power on your heater, you've got your water heater going, you've got a hairdryer going, you've got your fridge going, you may start tripping out your fuse box here. As you can see, we've got breakers here for our 240 volt. That way I know I'm running too much power so I can put it down to one and then I'll be able to start using other things as well. But your site should be able to tell you what kind of power you'll be able to run. I know here two kilowatts is absolutely fine, okay? So I can turn that on and then all I need to do is to select the temperature I want it to be, okay? I can now hear all the fans heating up. I'm starting to blow that air around, okay? But it's warm enough today that I don't actually need that on, okay? I could just have the fan running if I wanted to by putting it down to the fan setting. That will just circulate some air around the van. Now, again, if I'm not plugged into mains and I'm using gas, I can still use my heating. I just put it down to the flame setting down here. There we go. Turn the heating up, okay? And that will then light the boiler, my heater on gas, um, and provide my heating that way. All right. Right. But I don't need any of this on at the moment because it's nice and warm today, uh, so I'm going to turn all of that off. Okay. Carbon monoxide alarm, okay, and also my fire alarm here. All right, so they're all working nicely. Moving on round, cupboard, got a speaker there as well. Yeah, everything's working nicely. All right. Um, coming down to here. Uh, one thing I've actually missed on this, and I've made it a little bit difficult here, as I've just noticed on your water heater side of things. So this is the gas, absolutely, and this is the switch for your 230 water heater. But you can change um, what it's running on. So you can, again, with your kilowatts, you can use two kilowatts of power, or you can use one kilowatt of power. Okay, so just bear in mind, you can switch that here as well. But it, if it can be also on off as well, so just bear that in mind, okay, that if you turn it on there, you do need to make sure that it is on here and on the right kilowatts that you wanna use, okay? So just bear that in mind. Um, right, here's our kind of fuse box or our, our um, uh, power control unit, all right? As we said, we've got a battery which is providing our um, 12 volt side. So all of our 12 volt fuses are down here. You can see they're all labeled. So if you need to change a fuse, just blade fuses like you get in a car, this is where you're gonna come to, all right? But this is our 240 volt side, all right? This one's doing our fridge and our sockets. This one's doing our battery charger and our water heater. So very much like you'd have at home, all right? They're just trip switches. This one here though is our main RCD coming into the van. So that's where the power's hitting the van for the first time. Now, um, when you first plug in or you do plug in and you're having trouble, you can't get power to your domestic plug sockets or you can't get your boiler or your fridge to work on 240 volt, you may think it's a problem with your van. 
potentially it's not potentially it's a problem with your um uh with, with where you're plugged into because they also have trip switches as well okay the way we can test that you can see we've got a little blue button just here above that which with a t on it that stands for test okay now if you press that and these trip out okay these drop down that tells me that there is power coming to this unit so we do have power coming to the van if i press that button and nothing happens these stay in the upright position that tells me there's no power coming to the unit so the problem is going to be where i'm plugged into and 99.7 of the time that is where the problem's going to be it's going to be where you're plugged into on site all right so just bear that in mind speak to your site warden go and check your post make sure that that hasn't tripped out as well We've got two domestic plug sockets down the bottom there, as you can see. All right, we also have a reading light here on either side with an individual switch. Talking about windows, okay, we so we have fly screens on any window that opens. And we've got a blackout blind there as well that we can do to black out the cabin at night time. This is also on a ratchet system, so we can have it some of the way down or part of the way down or whatever we want to do. Or obviously both as well. Um, opening the window, very simple. They all open the same way. Three things open like that, all right. And then we open it to the desired um, uh, openness, if that's the right word. And then we just tighten these these up here, okay, either side, all right. And that is how we um, secure the windows in place. Okay, so the main window opens the same way as well, okay. You do have a breather setting as well, so you can lock these windows with them being slightly open. You can see we've got a little bit of a gap there, so you can lock them into position uh, slightly open um, so we can still get some airflow around the van, so just something to, to bear in mind as well. We've got our table here as well, all right, which that slides in and out, so that's just basically a coffee table. You can remove that for when we are using the bed, all right, that quite simply slides out like so, all right and we move that out of the way. That's what we use when we're making up the bed. I think we've seen how the bed works before, but I will just show you quickly. There we go, they drop in. We turn all of our cushions over with the bolster bit over this side, so we have a nice flat surface going all the way across using our back cushions to lay on as well in the middle. So we sleep on this side rather than that side, but these bolster bits, you can see, you want those window side and them upside down. And then to put them away, really simple. It will just drop down, out the way. All right. There we go. And then we put our table back into place. It's got a little lip you can see there, clips into place. And then drop it back down. Here are your book pack. All right, so some instruction manuals and bits and pieces in there. I'll leave that just down here for you, just so that you know where to find that one as well. Radio in the corner here. All right, I won't teach you how to use a stereo, but you've got a source button to turn it on and off with just there. And that's how we change between aux because we can plug our phones in. Also, we can put a CD in as well. And our volume is just on the, on the jog wheel there. All right. So I'll turn that off by holding down the source button. There we go. Okay. TV aerial is in here, all right? Directional TV aerial in the downwards position at the moment. The way we operate this when we want to use it is we unlock the locking nut here, we push the unit up into the sky, and then we uh, lock it back into place. That way the aerial is now raised above the van, okay? And then we can also twiddle this around as well. That will change the plane of the aerial sitting on top of the roof. Shouldn't really need to do it, but if you do need to do so, you will. Not forgetting, of course, when we leave, make sure we're putting it back down. That way we're not taking out trees and things and damaging the top of our van or our area when we're traveling. The signal then comes along through here and goes into our digital TV amplifier here. On off switch for that is on the top there. All right, but I would just leave it on um, and I would just keep the gain at maximum here. That way it's always on and at maximum gain. All right. Microwave. All right, I'm not gonna teach you how to use a microwave as well. All right, but just do bear in mind, when you're traveling please do take your microwave plate out of here all right you see there's a little sign on there as well we'll tell you that you'll find yours in your red book pack all right that's where we leave them um, the reason we don't leave them in is these doors aren't very strong for holding them in and these do bounce around while we're traveling okay so the amount of times we've seen them smash on the floor we've got dented floors dented worktops it's just not worth it all right um again more cupboards in here there's your 240 volt plug socket for your microwave, all right? Just bear in mind that you can only use that microwave when you're plugged into mains. 
We've talked about the sink, so we know we've got hot and cold running water in there. All right. Uh, and we also have our three gas burner hob. Again, when we're traveling, make sure the glass lid is down. Okay. Okay, these bounce around quite a lot. And if it's in the upwards position, again, you'll find it on the floor smashed, so it's not worth it. Now, lighting the gas hob, really simple. Again, you must make sure, of course, you've turned your gas on in your gas locker. But we hold these down, all right, turn them on, and then your igniter switch is down here on the front of the oven. All right, so there we go. Hold it down, wait till it takes a light, and then we can change the heat by just turning the knob as per you would expect, all right? Right. Um, draw here. And we also have a grill slash oven here, all right? Um, so it's a combi grill and oven. Grill's at the top, oven's at the back. Um, you can see here from the, the shading area which one does which. So this side is oven, this side is grill. Again, we put it down, hold it on, wait for it to light. There we go, you can see that light at the back there. And then we just leave that set to the temperature we want to and we're cooking. And again, the grill, just the other way, hold it down. There we go, and that's lit. All right. Always making sure, of course, we're turning off all of our gas, making sure we're in the off position every time we finish using it. All right. So that we're happy that we're not getting gas into the van. Uh, all right, it's just starting to rain a little bit, so I'm just going to close the skylight. Skylights, of course, have fly screens as well, and they also have um, blackout blinds as well. And we also have another light up here with two different light settings. All right, one middle is off and then two to the side all right so depending on how much light we want three-way fridge works on gas works on electric works off your car when you're traveling as well all right so it, you can see here we've got three settings okay so you can see it's pointing to the um the plug at the moment so that is 240 volt when we're plugged into electric if i was wild camping i would want to light it on gas so i would put it across to the flame side then we actually need to light it, all right? Now, the way we do that is we hold down, this is here is for our temperature of the fridge, so we can change the temperature, but it also gets our gas flow going as well, all right? And then we also have our igniter button over this side, all right? So what we want when we're writing it on gas is we want this um, to be in the green. So you see a little line going across, we want that to be in the green. So what I will do is I will hold this down, hopefully we can see this moving, might be not the best camera work in the world. So I'm gonna hold this down, press the igniter button, There we go, into the green, just like so. It does take a bit of pers per per persuasion, um, persevering with, that's the right word, all right, but it does go, all right. It's always best not to leave your fridge on, on totally, um, on the coldest setting, all right, it doesn't, it doesn't quite like it for some reason, so leave them just sort of three quarters or something like that, um, and you'll find it much easier uh, when you come to lighting, things like that as well, all right. Um, we'll come around this side very quickly. Again, we've got our TV socket here, 12 volt socket, and also a 240 volt socket down here as well. All right. Coming into our bedroom, again, we've got another light which works very similarly. And we've also got two LED lights at the front there for reading by, okay, at night. We have uh, access under the bed, okay. So that lifts up. And there we go, so you've got your loose fit carpets under there. All right, and that's all uh, storage other than that underneath the bed there. Plenty of wardrobe space. Okay, and hanging space in there. Light switch is just here for our vanity area. And in our toilet, light switch as we come in. Okay. Um, this has all been purged in here, so that's all working well. Shower works exactly as you'd expect it to do. Always making sure that we are shutting things like our doors when we're traveling and also pinning back our shower um, door as well. So that's not banging around while we're driving around. Talking about our toilet, okay, we look to the outside. Flush tank sits in the top here, cassette sits in the bottom, all right. Um, so what you do is use the toilet in the normal way. We then flush it, you can hear the pump running there, but that's empty. That will then fill it up with flush from the pink chemical um, and water. And then to flush it, we come and we find our handle down here, push that all the way back. That will open the gate, everything will fall down into the cassette. And then we make sure that we pull this all the way back, making sure that's all the way, that creates the seal, keeps all the smells away. And then that's how we use our toilet. When it's full and needs changing, this will illuminate red, so you'll know it's time to change your toilet cassette. Okay, 
that's kind of it for the van inside and everything so let's just quickly shut everything down as if we've been on holiday okay um we will first look, come along and we're going to turn everything off turn my master off turn my lights turn my water pump off okay i'm also going to turn off my fridge you may well turn it to the um battery symbol here that battery symbol here is for when we're using it in conjunction with our car all right so that is a 12 volt system from the car it will maintain the temperature in the fridge when you are traveling okay it will not um it will not um um chill the fridge down is the words i'm trying to get out okay so you if you want to do that you'll need to uh you'll need to chill the, the fridge down on gas or electric first and then add it that way um then what we're going to do is start draining down our water system. So I'm going to come in here and open my boiler drain valve. That's the yellow switch that we looked at down here earlier. That will then start draining all the water out. And then I'm going to come and open all of my taps. Okay. The reason I'm doing that is because we don't want to leave any water in the system. Okay. So we leave them open between hot and cold. All right. All of the taps. That way the air can get through both legs of the system. To give one example of the reason why we do that, if you can imagine in the winter and you do it um, and you leave water in the system, water freezes, it expands, it's got nowhere to go, so it cracks taps, it cracks water pipes, all sorts of things, all right? So this way we know if we're a habit of draining the whole system down, leaving our taps open, then we can't get into too much trouble, all right? Um, so that's kind of it really. We would then go away, unplug everything from the outside of the van, waste master, Acarol, stow all that away, okay? Lift up our legs and we are then ready to move the van, okay? Um, we've also got of course a motor mover as well. Um, so that works really simply. We add, we push the rollers onto the wheel, okay? You can see just here we have a bolt down here. All right. And we push this roller onto the wheel using the motor mover tool here this is an extendable tool push it on keeping our hands out of the way when we're doing it okay and once that's on we can turn on our handset by simply pushing the button there then once it'll go beep 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 right and i now know that that is on i can tell that because if i press this you can see that now rolls the, the roller all right and we can turn that round, and the van will pretty much turn on its own axis and move backwards and forwards but what we mustn't do is remove our handbrake until we've engaged our mover because otherwise we are going to end up chasing our van down the caravan park and again once we've finished with the mover we turn the handset off we put our handbrake on before we disengage the mover for the same reason but we can have a look at the mover with you when you pick the van up okay but that's your Bailey Orion. I hope that's been useful. We're here on the end of the phone if you need anything. But um, we look forward to seeing you at collection.